two. Part two, everybody, of the Grim Gazette. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Recorded live every Tuesday night. I mean, of course, you know, if I'm up for it, like, you know, I got to make sure I'm healthy. got to make sure I'm taking care of myself, all that good stuff. But yeah, every Tuesday night, um, we have a little warm-up chit-chat at 6 p.m. And then we kick things off at 7. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for being here. I am your host, T. Morris. I represent Old Spirits Investigations. And if you don't know what we're all about, go on ahead and check out our channel. Um, we have season three coming up very soon. We're going to be in Charleston, South Carolina, and we're going to be uh, premiering that live. You know, we're going to have a live premiere and all that stuff. And it, it's, been a, it's been an astounding journey. Um, I've really enjoyed bringing the Grim Gazette to you all. Um, this has been a, a great outlet, great way to, to just have a little fun, look at some other paranormal stuff that's on there. And uh, we also go into not just ghosty stuff, you know, the the the, the pick apart of things like that. Uh, you know, I've got uh, I've got Skinwalker videos that I've looked at, which have been kind of interesting. There have also been some UFO stuff that we looked at as well. Remember, if you have a paranormal clip that you'd like me to look at, if you have, and when I say a paranormal clip, I'm not talking about like a 20 minute film or something like that. I'm talking about a good solid, like a TikTok or a YouTube short or some, anywhere from between one minute and five minutes. Something I can, I can, I can look at and really pick apart, um, but both good and bad. Please make sure to uh, make a submission you can either do it in the comments of uh, the Grim Gazette replays on YouTube, or you can go on ahead, go over to the Discord and uh, go to the Grim Gazette room over in Discord, and you can drop in a link there and I can take a look at it. If it's a show, if it's an episode of somebody that you'd like me to have a closer look at, like whether or not you want me to debunk them or not, I, go, I, I look at that kind of stuff on a case-by-case -case basis because I want to make sure that I am not... Um, um, I want to make sure, hey, hey, Sly, how are you? Uh, I want to make sure that I am not glad you made it home safely. Very good to hear. Always happy to hear. But I want to I want to make sure that I am not, you know, painting myself in a weird in a weird corner when it comes to debunking, because sometimes when people are asked to debunk other uh, when investigators are asked to debunk other investigators. You, you really do need to be sure. And you do have to go in with an open mind and look at how they're investigating and what they're doing and try to be as positive about it as possible. I also tend to go into um, the Grim Gazette. I also tend to go into things like uh, true crime. And of course, the, 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 the line between true crime and paranormal, razor thin, razor thin. But then there's the, there are the true crime things that some people want to try to make into something paranormal. And that's kind of what I'm talking about right now. Um, so here's something that's been doing the rounds on threads lately. And, and I wanted to go on ahead and, and cover this. So I have gotten this so many times on threads. For a while it was, it was uh, you know, when I first got on threads, it was porn bots. Now I'm getting this thing. I'm getting this thing. Uh, Chalino Sanchez reading the death note Handed to him by an audience member, realizing this will be his last performance. It should also be noted that that is so clean. Obviously, they have dubbed the music into this. But, you know, it's a death note handed to him by an audience member, realizing this will be his last performance. And here's another one. Here's another take on the same clip. They handed him a note that said, keep singing or die. He gave his life to the craft. That is the spirit of Mex This is the spirit of Mexicans. We take fear and transmute it into love. Also, don't play with our money, lol. In real time, Venusian to our core. And yeah, the new the new black spot, you know. And uh, you know, came came from the same guy, but he reads the note. Um, it's obviously dubbed in music because you might have noticed that that uh, while it started in sync. It doesn't sound like a live recording. So this this live clip of his last performance, they've dubbed in the studio version of the song in there. So um, a note with a threat of death, not 
me thinking it meant an actual death note like the anime death note but again it's it's the same it's the same idea it's the same principle right but here's here's the here's the thing about about stuff like this let, let me just go on ahead and let me let me first first jump into um this right here all right so um chilino uh let's see chilino sanchez so this is the 1992 Coachella incident on January 25th, 1992. Chilino was performing at the Plaza Los Articos restaurant and nightclub in the desert city of Coachella. Reportedly, Ch Chilino was set to perform at 10 p.m. on the main stage. At around 7, the center was at maximum capacity with around 400 people in attendance. During his performance, Chilino began taking song requests from the audience. Shortly before midnight, Eduardo Gallegos, 32, a local unemployed mechanic from Thermal, California, under the influence of heroin and alcohol, requested El Gallo de Sina, uh, Sinaloa. I mean, afterwards, Gallegos jumped onto the stage and pointed a 25 caliber pistol at Chilino. In retaliation, Chilino pulled his 10 millimeter pistol from his waistband and then began a gun battle. Gallegos, first four shots, hit Chilino twice in the chest near his armpit, striking his lung, and one bullet hit according, uh, uh, accordionist Ignacio Nacho Hernandez in the thigh. Chalino's shots missed Gallegos and accidentally hit 20-year-old Claudio Rene Carranza in the right leg, hitting the main artery. He was later pronounced dead at John F. Kennedy Memorial Hospital. Sanchez and Gallegos opened fire at each other while ensuing in a brief chase into the crowd below, Nine to 15 shots were fired and around seven more people were reportedly hit in the exchange as well. Gallegos was wrestled to the floor by a bystander until Gallegos was eventually shot in the face with his own pistol. What was that earlier comment of, you can't write this stuff? You can't make this stuff up? Gallegos and Sanchez were both listed as critical and both transported to the Desert Regional Hospital in Palm Springs. Chalino Sanchez was in the hospital for 11 days and was released home without any charges due to his self-defense claim. Eduardo Gallegos, who survived his wounds, was convicted of attempted murder and was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. The shooting was reported by ABC World News Tonight and in both English and Spanish language newspapers. Chilino saw success with his sales and began getting airplay. Although it was a single, old-fashioned, non-narco song called Nieves del Enero, de, de Enero. For his next Los Angeles appearance at El Parrel, doors had to, be, had to close at 6 p.m., five to six hours before he was due on stage. So the the thing is, so who is the singer? The singer is, the, the singer is, um, uh, his name is uh, Chalino Sanchez, okay? And and so we get down to the murder, uh, which, which actually happened a few months later. On 15th of May, 1992, four months after the Coachella incident, and during a performance at the Salon uh, Bagambilias in uh, Cuelacan, Chalino was handed a note from someone in the crowd. The note is believed to have been a death threat, but has not been confirmed. A video recording of the song Alma and Nama and I and I took Spanish, everybody. I took Spanish. Alma Enamoradora shows Chilino crumpling up the note before singing the song. After midnight, Chilino drove away from the club with two of his brothers, a cousin, and several young women. They were pulled over by a group of armed men in black Chevrolet Suburbans. They showed state police ID cards and told Chilino their commander wanted to see him. Chilino and Green got in one of the cars while the others stayed behind. The following day at 6 in the morning, two farmers found Chilino's body by an irrigation canal near Highway 15, near the neighborhood of Los Laureles, Cuelicon. He was blindfolded, his wrists were red, and had rope marks. He had been shot in the back of the head twice. Enamored soul. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, and, and that's the thing. That's the thing. This guy, you know, when, when you, you know, the, 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 way, the way that these posts have been popping up, at least on my threads, they're they're talking about how he was a doomed soul and you know it was a death node it was there was there was there's there's something mysterious about this not really um 
this has been make this same clip has been making the rounds everywhere on on uh on on the uh on on the social channels and people have been talking up the you know the power of the death note the power of the death note um nobody knows what that was and i can't remember if it was it's in this article or if it's in another article but it was uh, I, I did a little i did a, a little deep dive into chilino sanchez starting with wikipedia because i knew wikipedia would give me the 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 high the the uh the the wide perspective of who he was all about i mean i'm gonna just come out and say it this dude was living the gangster life this dude was living the gangster life if you're packing heat i mean you know i don't think taylor swift is packing i'm just saying i don't think taylor swift is packing i don't think dolly is packing and you know the problem with fame especially if you are if you are working a venue that you're getting requests from the audience i'm assuming that is a cultural thing because since when you know even even when they're up and coming since when is you two or anybody you know uh like like jason mraz i don't think they're going to be taking requests from the audience they have a song set they come out and they do the thing right and um and I mean, she is kind of, well, I mean, you know, Tay Tay be Tay Tay. That's what I'm just saying. You know, I'm just mm. <laughs> Tay Tay. But, um, but again, the, the point I'm getting at is that this dude was packing heat. And I'm sure his bandmates were packing heat. And I mean, uh, you know, Chalino was living, the, li living, was living La Vida Loca. Living La Vida Loca. Uh, you know, you, you, you get into the guys have to up. And I'm, I'm sure Chalino did not know that about the guy that hopped up on the stage of Cochinella, but the dude was hepped up on heroin and alcohol and Chalino got into a chase with this dude. He got into a chase with this dude. Uh, breaking market say I saw uh, rascal flats at the mullet festival and they took requests. Little child panic requested. Uh, requested Boston more than the feeling, and they loved it. <laughs> now, now Rascal Flats. I mean, again, it depends. On, it depends on the venue. Depends on the the singer. And from what I understand, guys like Chilino, they took a lot. They took a lot of requests from people, right? Um, and if you're opening, if you're opening yourself up to take to take requests, especially the ones that are written down. And you're passing notes to the singer. You do that in Latin parties. You pass notes to the singers for songs. Okay, then it is a cultural thing. Then you you know, w when you get the death note, the death note is one of those mystical things where you know you get a you get a pneumatic signal or something like that, or you get the you know um, you get you get the evil eye. This was not a death note. In fact, nobody knows in this clip. In this infamous clip that is making the rounds, nobody knows what's on there. It could have been a request. It could have been, "Hey, meet me in my room. My room key is taped on. Uh, is taped on. Uh, uh, is my room key is under. You know, is under here. Or you know, knock three times and I'll know it's you. Whatever. It could have been a number of things. There's no way knowing unless you see the note what this is. It could have also been a song request. That is possible. Rick Springfield was an hour late, so they ran out of songs. Oh, well, you know, hey, come on. If you run out of songs, then it's always good to have a backup. Or asking for an autograph. There's a lot of things that it could have been on that note. But do I think it was a death note? And the way people are making him out into a hero, I'm like, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sully this man's uh, name or his legacy or what have you. But I mean... Live by the sword, die by the sword. I, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say there other than, other than, you. Hello there. Hello there. Um, if you live a certain lifestyle, it will eventually, it will eventually catch up to you. I mean, Aurelis, let's be honest. This guy is no gypsy kings, right? You know, no gypsy kings. Love me some gypsy kings. I love me 
some gypsy kings you know what i'm saying and if you don't know the gypsy kings i just do yourself a favor do yourself a favor you go on ahead you go on ahead and you 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 go either onto spotify or go and look up gypsy kings volare and and you know you might think it's volare oh you know the dean martin who knew this is the this is volare by the gypsy kings volare oh it's balling it's balling bit hmm love me some gypsy kings i'm sorry what were we talking about oh we were talking about chelino chanchez okay so this is a this is an article whole nother level see real this is why i got to take you on a ghost hunt this is why i got to take you on a ghost hunt because i got to feel i got i got a fever and i and the only prescription i have is more ghost hunting i got a feeling though i do have a feeling we'd have a good time um okay so this is from billboard magazine let's talk a little bit about this dude uh chelino sanchez's legacy continues to be celebrated 30 years after his death now this was this was written two years ago the rise of Chilino Sanchez could be attributed to a confluence of events. His unique raw vocals made him stand out in a crowded field of ranchera balladeers, but he was able to become El Rey de Corrido because he was at the right place at the right time. The Nieves del Enero singer from Sinola, Mexico, was coming of age at the same time that the drug trade was also growing in the 1980s. It was also around the time that there was a wave of migrants crossing the border from Mexico to the U.S., escaping violence sparked by drug cartels. Sanchez was also an immigrant who had been who had settled in Inglewood, California, and hustled to make a living selling his own cassettes out of his car trunk. I see. I, I hustle recognizes hustle. I love that. He sang Naco Corridos, a musical genre that some argue glamorizes drug crime. So basically, a Latin spin I on gangster drugs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Second hand. Um, I had to do drugs. Um, uh, which narrated a lifestyle that seemed relatable at a time for many on both sides of the border. His music represented a lot of stuff that was happening in our lives, said LA based writer and producer Eric Galindo. Uh, he also was the host of an eight part podcast titled Idolo, The Ballad of Chalino Sanchez. Both Mexico and the US were seeking the, Im were seeing the impact. The thing he was singing about, you had figures like Pablo Escobar in the consciousness of the people. All of us are obsessed with anti-heroes, and he was singing about them. That's why his music connected on both sides of the border. Uh, early this year marked 30 years since Chalino Sanchez was murdered in Mexico. When he was shot and killed at 31 years old, he was starting to tour the southwest U.S. states and in Mexico. And he had just signed a deal with a regional Mexican indie label, Sintanas Acurido. Acurido. Uh, which was founded by Pedro Riviera and was the label home to his kids, uh, Lupillo and Jenny Riviera. To this day, his music is streamed by millions and his music is still being played by Spanish language radio stations. His influence on popular culture is as strong as ever with Snoop Dogg referencing, wow, Snoop Dogg, um, Snoop baby, with Snoop referencing his music podcast being produced that honor his legacy and tribute concerts that pay homage to his corridos and ballads like Alma Enamorada, uh, Pren Prenda del Alma, and Los Chismes, which became anthems to multi-generational multi Latino homes. Um, like gangster rap idols such as Tupac and Biggie, Sanchez catered to a specific community when no one else was doing it. And he was doing it in their language, adds Galindo. He seemed very real, as opposed to a lot of the other people like... Uh, uh, Kenton Flas, Don Francisco, or Gloria Stefan. They were um, they were like on pedestals, but not Chilino. He was a guy from the neighborhood and somehow had made it. He was on this he was this person who didn't fit in and somehow managed to make his own road. For us, that meant everything. So you kind of get a feel. <clears throat> you kind of get a feel for what this dude was was all about. And and I think that's I think when you see the clip of what's going on with uh, with him getting handed this note, you know, it's not the black spot. It's not it, it's it's not some strange curse. It could be a number of things on that piece of paper. But everybody immediately goes to the death note thing. Play or die. You know, I mean, I, I don't think it was that. And, and that's why I recommend when you see these enigmatic clips show up, 
take a moment, do a little research, do a little research. Because like I said, I didn't know that people who reached even that level that he was at, I didn't realize people would take requests. I didn't realize that was a cultural thing. I honestly didn't. Um, I, 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 I thought that, that you would reach a certain, a certain level where, where you just don't, you don't take requests. You go out, you got your, you got your set list, you go for that. Right. And, um, and only at the weirdest times would somebody say like it, you know, to me, someone at that level, if you're playing Coachinella, you're at a level where you're not going to be taking requests, but apparently this is a thing. And, um, and I totally, I, I totally get, I totally get the vibe. I totally get the oeuvre. And, um, and I think it's, I, I think it's important though, that if you, if you do a little research on the person and you find out, okay, how are they, you know, how are they living? Because fame, as I've said, I was talking about this, uh, if not yesterday, I was talking about it last week. Fame on, on any level is a weird thing. And, and you know, I mean, it, it's easy for me to throw around. I mean, I, it's it's easy for me to throw around and say, "Hey, like, I'm like I've never met Arellis, right? Arellis has never met me. We could both be thinking this guy's got a crawl space and they got a pillow with my name on it. You know, I, it, it could be something like that, right? Um, I remember, I remember somebody flew out. Oh, I remember. I flew out to visit a friend of mine, right? I flew out to visit a friend of mine and and I bump into this dude who was just hammered off his ass. And he says to me, wait, man, you flew all the way from Virginia to here and you never met this guy before? And I was like, I was like no, man, but you know, I, I know him well enough. Dude, he's probably gonna like harvest your kidney or something. I told my, my buddy Paul about that and Paul was like, was like, Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Take out and make a quick phone call. Okay. Empty the tub. He's onto us. He's onto us. And I mean, it, it was, it, we still joke about that. But the truth is, and I've seen it happen on 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 um on Twitch before. Some people take that they they don't they either a don't keep their 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 fame in perspective, or b they overplay it. But you know what? Overplay is not necessarily a bad thing. Well, I mean, until you start working with professionals and then you suddenly realize, okay, you're you're kind of delusional. Um, but I have, I've, I mean, I've seen it up close and personal when I was, when I was talking about uh, working with Lonnie. There are some fans that, th there are some fans that really blur those lines. And it's also very easy, particularly in the format of Twitch, to sort of forget that I'm a complete stranger to you all and vice versa. But everybody has different, you know, and everybody has different levels of comfort in who you want to meet up and how you want to meet up and all that stuff. And hey, Islander, how are you, man? Um, and so you just have to, you have to gauge that. And depending on the way you live your lifestyle, I mean, if you live life on the edge, you're going to, you're going to meet up with some unsavory people. And if this guy was doing the Latino version of gangster rap, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty, you're, you're getting to some dark territory there. You're getting to some seriously dark territory. So, you know, I, 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 I had to look into this because I was just like death note, huh? This, this guy got a death note. We don't know what he got. Which is why I tell you, same thing with paranormal, which is what, but, but we're, which is where we're about to segue into never stop questioning, never stop asking questions. Keep digging. Keep dig I collect handbags. <laughs> are you saying in the, are, now is that how you're saying it in the in the <laughs> in a very in a very ominous tone or else? I collect handbags. Leather handbags. Do you like my handbag? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just being a jerk. <laughs> All right. 
Got another deep dive we're getting into, and tonight we are looking at an Islander. You came in at the worst time. This is why you got to get in here earlier, man, because then you'd have some context. You'd have some context about what I'm talking about here. <laughs> but don't worry. You're, you're, you're in for a treat now because we are about to do a deep dive into a, um, a video that, ironically, Arellis and I saw together. We watched this together. Not like in the same space, but you know what? <laughs> presses rewind um but you know eventually who knows if if Arellis and i ever meet uh you know we could do live sit downs hey let's watch this thing together but i wanted to play uh, play you a clip and we're going to do a little deep dive into and a little bit of analysis into what was going on at this um at this paranormal investigation featuring connor biddle of paranormal encounters i was hoping he was going to show up I did tell him, I, I did say, yo, just so you know, I'm doing a deep dive on your show here. Um, someone steal me them desks. <laughs> so let me let me explain what, yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, clean the cat boxes, clear the, clean the apartment, shower time. Okay. Okay. And thank you for the twerking bear. We love you. Hey, can we have another quick heart attack for, uh, uh, for our girl panic? She, 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 uh, she had a tough one. But we love our panic. We love our panic dearly. So go on ahead, fill the fill the chat with with hearts while I set this scene up. And uh, yeah, um, we love you, panic. You have a good night. So let me explain first. Let me give you the backdrop on what's going on here in this particular uh, clip. So this is Connor Biddle of Paranormal Encounters. He recently did a team up with a group called Paranormal Quest. Really good guy, Connor Biddle. Really good guy. And Paranormal Quest and Connor, Paranormal Encounters, I should say, Paranormal Encounters and, and Paranormal Quest were both at, uh, they, they were they were investigating this place in Indiana. It's a, it's a historical town, but the town itself did not exist. It's a bunch of collection of, of, of various.
That's pretty compelling right there. That's cat pretty balls compelling. Going off. So he's got the unknown, and then got the cat It's going unknown. Off. Oh my God, the cat ball's going off. I just heard. I'm hearing walking back there right now. Thank you for doing that. I can hear you. Oh my God. Oh. Halt, stop. Do you want me to stop this session with you? Oh, the cat bolt's going off again. I'm standing absolutely still. So what the, the reason why I think he points out I'm standing absolutely still, you'll notice um, I can turn off the I can turn off the um, <clears throat> closed captioning as well. I'll put those back on later. <clears throat> but you'll notice this is an old school uh, floor. If you remember, and if you if you've seen me do any of my um, my footage reviews from the Jenny Wade House in uh, in Gettysburg. The floors are very similar. They're long planks. The reason why it's called a cat ball is that's, that's exactly what it is, Islander. It's a cat ball. Um, it is a it is a cat toy, and it is the most affordable piece of ghost hunting gear that you can pick up. Because for five bucks, you can get three of them, right? And these are just plastic cat balls that have LEDs in them. And they light up when they move. So the idea is, is that you you can, um, it, the reason why he mentioned that he stood still is with these long plank floors like this, you could move yourself back and forth. You can shake the booty and what have you. And you could set off a cat ball because of the, because that's how sensitive they are. Now, the thing I was asking Pip about, <clears throat> apparently there's a make and model of cat balls. I don't know if it's the same ones that we're using here, but um, she found out from Paranormal New Zealand I believe that's who it was, Paranormal NZ. Um, she found out from them that <clears throat> they don't use cat balls because whatever cat balls they were using, they would go off every so often as a way to uh, grab the attention of the cat. That's not how our cat balls are designed. Our cat balls are literally movement. They're movement based. But there are there are different there are different kinds. Yeah, the important one is to get the ones that are that only go off when they move. And that's that's why <clears throat> that's why you see Islander sometimes people use cat balls, and that's why he mentioned I'm not moving, I'm st I'm standing perfectly still. So that that's again compelling. It's very compelling. Now you also notice the other device he has over here. That's a music box, also generated by movement. So whatever is moving, it's near the cat ball, but not near the music box. <clears throat> Oops. Hi, Benedict. Thank you for doing that. Ooh, hey, buddy. Do you want me to stop communicating with you? Actually, no. I don't know if they're uh, they're not gyros. They're um they're it's a music box that has a uh, a sensor to it. It has a motion sensor on it. So yeah. So that's what that's what's happening there. What the f was that? No, I didn't hear the running. I did not hear the running bit. Okay, it's coming up. 3704. Right there. What the f It's right there. It is very soft, and I want to see if I can boost it. But right after he fades out, so here's the replay. It's just a little... It almost sounds like, it almost sounds like a small child whining.
him a dick. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Aww. Okay. So let me just back that up. <laughs> My, my, I, th I think Gamer Cat would make a terrible uh, paranormal investigator. I don't mind saying. All right, here we go again. It's like at thirty-seven oh four and point five or something like that. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. I'm going to go on ahead and hop over to Adobe Audition where I have the clip. So there's the clip in the lower in the lower corner. I want to see if I can find this clip. So first let's go on ahead and play it cuz I know he says he it, it's it's right here. It's at this point and Connor basically drops a WTF bomb. Let's make sure. What the f such a nice guy, though. <laughs> I love me some Connor Biddle, baby. I do. I I have invited him to a uh, to a, to a paranormal investigation. I really hope he says yes. I really do. I'll I'll keep everybody posted. But <clears throat> let's go on ahead and let's have a listen and let's see if uh, let's see what we got here. Am I being respectful to you? Because if I'm not, I want you to tell me so I can figure out how to be more respectful for you. He's very that's good. I'm trying to say thank you for the communication. He is very, very good. Know that I appreciate that. There's that noise back there again. So you should hear the footsteps that's somebody here. back there. Hello? Those footsteps are eerie as hell. Those are eerie as hell. And if you're curious, what he's done is he's he's boosted the audio, which is why you see down here in the thermal, the thermal rendering of the um of of the audio, you notice that it's that there's there seems to be like this this almost like a weird staticky bit. That's what happens when you boost the audio. You're also boosting um the ambience around it, and that's why it comes it, it looks like this on the heat map. Cat ball's going off. Okay, so there's there's the cat ball going off. It's unknown. Oh my god, the cat ball's going off. I just heard. I'm here walking back there right now. Thank you for doing that. I can hear you. Oh my God. I heard the bang there. I heard the bang there. <clears throat> okay. Halt, so. stop. You so, want me to stop this session with you? All right, so so ghost tube goes off. Oh, the cat ball's going off cat again. Cat ball goes off again. I'm standing absolutely still. He says he's standing still. And like any good editor worth their salt, they drop in a little bit of flavor, a little, little stinger, because that helps. Helps helps build the tension. Gives you the heebie-jeebies. It's always nice. All right, here we go. Thank <clears> you <throat> for doing that. Shuffle. Thank you, Vi. Do you want me to stop communicating with you? What the f***? was that All right. So it's right in here. It's right in here that I hear it. And it's very soft. 
So here's where here's where uh, he fades out his uh, his. Sentence. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Islander. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight this area. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna go on ahead and just highlight this part that that I, I've just boosted the audio for, and then I'm going to go to Effects, Noise Reduction, Capture Noise Print. So the tricky bit about what I'm doing here is I'm not using a mixer. I'm using the computer to change the, the audio and, and remove uh, any noise that I don't want. The problem is that this this version of editing is called destructive editing. Phil doesn't care for it, but um, this gets me better results than when I'm working with a mixer. All right, so I got a noise reduction, and now I'm just going to go on ahead and just drop drop the noise reduction a bit so that uh, I can have this. All right. And then I'm going to start <clears throat> adding in noise reduction. And you'll notice that when I when I join the noise reduction, you'll notice that the green line lines up with the the yellow, and that gets some of the hiss out. Now I go to even more reduction of noise. There it is. That is not normal chat. And look, and you know what? You can see it in the heat map now. I wish I could s I might need to send this to Connor. He's going to think I'm stalking him at this point, but but I'm like Connor, you need to listen to this. Cuz if you take a look, there it is in the heat map. It's right there. Wow. So, <clears throat> so my um, my two cents on this is this is the, the the point I wanted to get at is this is why I watch paranormal shows. I watch paranormal shows to see what other people are doing, how they how they're doing it. Because sometimes you can learn a lot, but I also do it sometimes just to keep an eye an eye and an ear an eye out and an ear and an ear to the ground, so that when I when I can go back and say to these guys, uh, "Hey, Connor." I think you picked up an EVP and um, you'd be surprised how many times someone has said to me on my stream, Hey T go back to this point and listen at this point. So when you see us doing a live investigation, it wouldn't be a bad thing to say, okay, I thought I heard something. You jot down, you jot down the time and, <clears throat> and then go get yeah, guilty. Yeah. Camera Cammy did that last, uh, last week when we looked at her clip. And we picked up a we picked up a sigh, <clears throat> but um, we picked up a sigh at the wayside. So yeah, uh, different ears pick up different frequencies and things. Yeah, and it always helps if you can say, "Hey, around this time frame, around this time mark," and um, that's pretty interesting. Did you want to hear it, hun? Are you are you navigating kittens? Never mind. But now I got it. Now I got to somehow get this clip to. Uh, to, to Connor. I, I want to hear it. Okay. Cat, cat situation. Cat situation Here. has been. This was when Connor, this was when Connor, this was when Connor was in the, the uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll go back a bit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so Connor was, if you remember, Connor was in the, the, the school, the schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, this is, this is the point in the video where he's at, right? Do you want me to stop communicating with you? Mm 
What the f was that? Yeah, that's wow. Oh no, 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 not yet. Oh. Not yet. He already, he caught that. He didn't catch what's coming up. Listen for it. <clears throat> it's coming up right here. It's coming up. What? Do you hear that? Wait, what was that? I don't know. But it wasn't it, he wasn't moving, so it wasn't his foot against the it wasn't his foot against the the um against the floorboards or anything like that. So yeah, that's that's I find that I find that very intriguing. Intriguing. Oh, pardon me. And now I have to try to figure out some way of getting this clip back to <laughs> back to to um let's see. So let's just say possible. Which one is that? Ah, and um, and you know Connor Biddle, he's 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 popping around. He's doing some solo uh some solo explorations right now, but he uh, I'm noticing that he's he's teaming up with different people, and um he he's no he's he's one of the good ones. I I like what he does. He's as you can see, he's very respectful in uh, in how he he uh, he uh, he gets in there. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy what he does. So, so make sure to make sure to check out check out his channel on YouTube. You can also, if you're if you're a Prime user, you should be able you should be able to find on Prime early seasons of Paranormal Encounters. Um, it was really interesting because we actually watched one of his uh, his earlier Paranormal Encounters. We saw one of his earlier ones. Um, where he went to the um, he went to the Octagon Mansion, and I was like, "Ooh, he went to the Octagon Mansion, cool." And when he went, there was there was literally nothing on the walls. Um, it was like they, I, I, I want to say, it was you know the guy just the, the the guy who owns the Octagon Mansion just bought it, so there's nothing on the walls. And I said, okay, this was about a year ago, so maybe he's he's you know done some decorating, he's he's made it more presentable. We're gonna feature the Octagon Mansion uh, this this season, and I just got to tell you, it was like investigating a fever dream. Um, I understand now what it's like to have ADHD. I'm just gonna say, I now understand what it's like to have ADHD because I investigated the Octagon Mansion in Withville. I, I, I did not know where to look. It was crazy, but good. It was, it was, it, I think it was a good night. It was the first time, it, they, they were very kind. They were very kind of very accommodating over, over at the, the Octagon Mansion because it was, um, it, they, they didn't want our, they didn't want our investigation hindered by the AC. So they turned off the AC problem was we were investigating in July and it was the hottest night on record. It was the first time chat. It was the first time my phone, my phone back then overheated and stopped stream because my phone literally overheated. Um, that was new. So yeah, hopefully we won't have a repeat. And, and we decided, we, we decided, OSI said, you know, if we can have AC, we'll take it. We'll work around AC. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, that is where we're going to end tonight's Grim Gazette. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. I hope you all had a good time. Um, it was great being able to bring this, uh, this content to you. As you all know, I film this every Tuesday night, starting at 6 with a nice little warm-up chat, and then... We wrap it up somewhere around this this time, this time of night. But I really do appreciate each and every one of you being here. Thank you so much for supporting not only uh, this Twitch channel, but also supporting Old Spirits Investigations. We do have a live investigation coming up April 13th. We'll be journeying to Clifton Forge, Virginia, and we will be <clears throat> uh, investigating for the first time never investigated before the masonic theater of clifton forge virginia cross your fingers connor biddle of paranormal encounters might join us if everything works out with his schedule and ours so we'll see um that is part that live investigation is actually part of a 
weekend, a full weekend of OSI programming. On April 12th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be doing the premiere episode of Old Spirits Season 3. And then on April 13th, next day, it's going to be from 5 p.m. Eastern Time, USA, to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, USA. <clears throat> We're going to be doing the investigation live from Clifton Forge, Wi-Fi permitting. And then Sunday, I'm going to come back here and 7 o'clock Eastern Time, do a special Sunday night stream. We sit down and we do a post-mortem on the entire weekend, and you tell me your thoughts. You tell me what I what I got right, what I got wrong, what we could uh, fix, and basically how we can uh, make it all happen. So, yeah. That's what we're going to do, all right? Thank you all again for joining us uh, for this, uh, for, for this, uh, 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 for, for, yeah. <laughs> this is when I know it's time to take my bow. <laughs> Thank you all very much for, for uh, joining us for the Grim Gazette. I will see you all next week. Take care, everybody.